Hello, so in this video I'm going to talk about something which um, is basically drama um, uh, and it sure has been uh, instigated by the fact that I've been banned essentially from attending HEMA sparring at Waterloon Sparring Group. Um, it, it's not so much an extent where I can take any legal action because it's I, it's happened in the past and um, London Historical Fencing Club has kind of sustained what their decision basically. Um, so I have nothing to lose. I'm probably not going to be doing HEMA in the future now because it's not practical for me to go to other clubs in London, uh, mainly because it's just not practical enough for me to make it. So I don't have enough sparring time. And also London Historical Fencing Club does quite a few events in the UK. So that excludes me for that. Um, to an extent, I'm limited financially as well. But this opens up something because I essentially now have nothing to lose. Um, so I'm going to say my opinion, and this is a disclaimer, this is my opinion on certain events. I'm going to name names because they deserve to be named, essentially, um, and bring perspective to things which have happened in the club um, and for such a, a place that, in you know, instills ethical behavior and diversity inclusion apparently not when it it comes to certain people so i want to talk about a friend of mine who i haven't spoken to for a long time called stefano cognes i think i've got his name correctly um he used to practice in london in terms of uh hema he used to work in london as well pre-covid he um is a very good person from the time that I've known him and I knew him very well, um, he was somebody who didn't cause trouble. He was Italian and Italians like Mediterranean people are very upfront with their speaking and have a way of speaking. And it's usually humorous, but it's not like intentionally disrespectful or, or people use offensive, but offensive is very subjective as a word. In short, he got barred for something he wasn't responsible for, as far as I'm aware and as far as the evidence I've seen is aware. And this has to do with um, people who moderate the club, essentially, and also with one person in particular who just happens to be trans. Um, her name is, I believe, Alex Orson, or Alex, Alex Orson, or Austin, um, who runs, who's part of the club. Um Alex is a high, I can only best describe her in my experience of being with her as very um, hypochondriac. She was somebody who was very socially conscious all the time and anxious. And that put off a number of people, including myself. And I often was very courteous and nice to her, but also Stefano from wanting to spa with her and hang out because she was the type of person who, because of her, essentially her upbringing on the struggle she's had to go through um essentially is now um looking at everything through a certain perspective and looking for fire essentially essentially in short this person is looking for smoke where there is no fire um and this caused a number of issues which stefano had personally come to me as a person and spoke about and he, he, when we were hanging out together after Waterloo sparring, he voiced his apprehensions about the situation. And he had personally told me that he didn't want to be around Alex because she had personally gone to great lengths to make him uncomfortable. And also she was a bit of a hypochondriac, which unfortunately made his life difficult as well. Um, And this is something that, um, I witnessed before he got banned in terms of London Historical Fencing Club from going to London events. So this is pre-COVID, but essentially, and I stood up for him because I thought it was the right thing to do. Um, he essentially, I had been part of the WhatsApp chat. I'm not part of it anymore. Um, and it makes making this case with evidence very difficult. Um Alex had been complaining on the group, essentially, that uh, Stefano wouldn't talk to her um, and that, you know, she, you know, she, she didn't want to cause any confrontation, but she was almost forcing the issue like he had to come and talk to her, to which one of the organizers essentially called Leanne uh, Cooper 
um, essentially said that, you know, you shouldn't really care about him and that essentially in short, she was saying he can fuck off. Now, I'm part of the group and I'm going to say my opinion on the matter. So I interject and I say, look, Stefano is a friend of mine. He's uh, somebody who is I'm quite close to. I've sparred with him. Um, I've been, you know, uh, colleagues with him. I don't think what you're saying is very justifiable. And, you know, I'm being very respectful at this point. Um, and basically saying that um, what's happened is not acceptable and it's, it's not pretty, it's not courteous. Um, to which she gets very disrespectful and she starts saying, well, that's my fucking opinion, so so what? Um, and again, I'm trying to be really nice here and give the benefit of the doubt and like, you're being really unreasonable. I end up leaving the group and I just send an email to LHFC saying... Um, what I thought of her behavior was not justifiable um, and essentially she's like somebody who's the, like just the epitome of deprived of humanity basically and what does LHFC do as a response to this um, they say more or less that um, they'll investigate it which is what all committees do when they don't investigate it um, and improve it um, they basically said that what i did was tantamount to slander because of the expression almost threatening legal action and at the time i was working for a law firm and also i have family who work in law so good luck with that but um like they were saying that and th because they said because of the way that i'd express myself they said that i would need they would have to reconsider my actions in the future in order to come to a decision whether they wanted me back this is after loads of stuff has happened. Like I'd been COVID did hit. Um, this was post Katie when like after I'd been sexually assaulted and all the fallout with the hammer group. Um, but I just wasn't happy. I even went out of my way to send a follow up email to apologize for everything to which they said, we'll accept your apology, but we won't consider you. Um, thinking that I had somehow had some ulterior motive to wanting to apologize, but I just wanted to reconcile the situation. Um, then the news hit about Stefano. Stefano, based on quote unquote unethical behavior, where I think I know exactly what happened, which is that he had essentially um, been confronted. Alex had essentially confronted him and he'd said some stuff aggressively which she misconstrued as being transphobic, resulted in him being banned from LHFC, all events in London that they host, and he ended up going back to uh, Italy. I don't think, based on the information that I know, that he did anything wrong. I think, based on the evidence that I could find from what he told me, he was um, shoehorned into a confrontation he didn't want and it got it got heated and they draconiously mistook that as being transphobic which uh, essentially excommunicated him and ruined his prospects of doing HEMA for a large amount of events um, in London now he's in Italy um, and it, it hasn't necessarily affected him but this, he's probably never going to come back to the UK now Um so this becomes even more difficult with somebody who wants to pick up HEMA again and I'm being very polite to them and essentially because Waterloo Sparring Group is now hosted in London Historical Fencing Group they have um, decided that they're not going to let me in based on past behaviour. Based on past behaviour of defending a colleague of mine reasonably um, based on how he was treated in, in the club and... Um, and essentially being excommunicated myself, essentially, um, which is not acceptable. I don't agree with it. There's really nothing I can do. There's a lack of evidence on both sides. Nothing could be done legally anyway. Um, so it, it nothing can be done. But I'm going to be upfront and honest and name names because this was based on the decision of Leanne Cooper, um, Jamie McKeever whatever his last name is you know who he is he's the Vardy guy um Alex Austin essentially these are the three individuals Stefano Cognes his chances of doing HEMA in the UK were ruined significantly and I don't agree with that at all it, it's something which is unjustifiable and from this uh, club who now has significant influence and 
power and decision making in London to decide who joins and who doesn't based on terms essentially that they've contradicted themselves based on I think unethical conduct it's, it's unreasonable entirely the 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 members of the club have done unethical things as well I've been threatened by members of their club um, who who basically threatened to have me excluded from the club and my social group so we're now stuck in a catch-22 I can't do him I can't practice it it's now a fork in the road and I can't do anything um, I'm not asking for support um, but I want to bring this to light because I feel and I think that somebody has been justifiably uh, ill-treated and deserves a lot better treatment as a result this is not acceptable in any meaningful way and it's not um, justified in any meaningful way as well there's a lot of dirt as well on a lot of uh, HEMA clubs in in the UK um, that I could go into I'm not going to but this is some of the dirt essentially that has arisen that I think is based on unfair conduct um, that has essentially gotten someone cancelled. And this happened roughly 2020, 2021, when this person was uh, banned. They didn't say his name explicitly on the LHFC Facebook page, but it was very much him. And I'm bringing it to light now. I don't think he deserved what happened to him. Um, this is very much an abuse of power in my um opinion and essentially they took somebody who posed no threat or no ill will and was forced i believe into a confrontation to uh, be in that confrontation and then be barred from the club and events since some events in the uk for being transphobic this has essentially forced my hand because it's forced my hand and i essentially can't practice unless i do it solo and then there's some events i can't go into the uk um i have essentially nothing to lose by doing this video so i'm bringing to light everything based on my perspective and series of events and i don't know what the future holds it would be really nice to continue this to spar and to do more practical stuff but that's not going to happen so um this is disappointing for myself uh this is disappointing to the people i could spar with essentially grow the research in terms of middle eastern stuff and eastern roman stuff but as it's not going to happen it's a missed opportunity unfortunately and it's going to have to be ended there i want again i want to bring to light from my perspective what i believe has happened um since it's like four or five years ago it's quite a, a while back and yeah i don't think it's justifiable and i thought it was an abuse of power the fact that somebody is of a certain identity with the racial sexual gender um religious does not give the right for those people to act unreasonably and to go on witch hunts and look for confrontations to get people banned um and essentially now we're in this position where this has happened and the re the consequences are far reaching um there's probably more hema clubs who have done stuff like this but those people are unheard and their stuff is gone unheard as well so that's it i don't know what the future holds i don't know where the future is going with this video there may not be any progress whatsoever um that's it goodbye so i just wanted to end this video with this with no practical way for me to practice hema essentially in spa there aren't any other ones i'm just going to be completely honest with scholar gladiatoria matt easton blanked me essentially because he didn't want me to join the club so we got to payment and then he just stopped contacting me um, he he kept bringing up objections on why I shouldn't join and then just didn't. Um, there's London Longsword Academy. From my experience, um, I attended a few of their lessons, but I didn't want to join. I didn't say I was going to attend anymore. David Rawlings then proceeded when I was on Facebook to like harass me and demand to know why I hadn't turned up, even though I didn't say I was going to. Um, and there's also been a lot of stuff with his club as well. Um, there's been allegations against his club which I'm not going to go into detail about there was a reddit about it um, but it's been taken down unsubstantiated things are unsubstantiated things but there are things in the woodwork that I've heard essentially with London Longsword Academy which I'm not going to go into detail about um, this kind of puts a uh, this puts a 
a wrench in the works in terms of me doing historical martial arts. Um, essentially prevents me. The only club I can really go to is on the other side of London and is a very long distance away and is just simply not logistically viable. Um, so I essentially don't have any real options in London to learn uh, anything or to spar. Um, so it's the end, I guess. Um, now... <sighs> I don't, maybe this is copium, copium and I'm uh, rationalizing, but had this been the only thing I did, I would probably, um, it would be the end of the world for me. Luckily, this is not the end of the world for me. I do other stuff as well. So it's, it's kind of no sweat off my back. It's a shame. It is a shame uh, that I can't develop any further and do anything any further, but that's just the way the world is. Life is unfair um sometimes there's things that there's nothing we can do about them despite the fact they're unfair um and for those people who didn't want me to succeed in terms of the mamluk or middle east and stuff you've won there's there's nothing more that i can say about this you've won so uh for people who had ill will towards me and didn't want me to succeed congratulations you got what you wanted and that's it I'm going to head off. Um, I don't really have much else to say. So it's not the end of the world. It's the end of something. But it's not the end of the world in general. Um, so thank you for watching this. If there aren't any YouTube videos in the future. It's understandable. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.